Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Jeremiah chapter 28. Kind of an impromptu video here, um, but this was just something the Lord had put upon my heart and I want to share it with you, if you don't mind. Jeremiah chapter 28. We're going to take care of this whole chapter. We're going to read this whole thing. Um, and this, of course, is for our instruction in righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 28. And it came to pass the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Okay, so this prophet Hananiah, as it says there, in front of everybody, okay, looking to put on a show. Look at me, look at me. Verse 2, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Go to 2 Peter. Hold your place here. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 19. But these, as natural brute beasts, unregenerate, still in their natural, have not been born again, saved, converted, made to be taken and destroyed, Speak evil of the things they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, just like Hananiah, and we're going to see that, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Okay, now hold your place here. Go back to Jeremiah. Okay? Look at that. Okay? Verse 1 where he says, uh, Which was of Gabaon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of, of the priests, and of all the people, saying, that was Hananiah. Okay? In verse 1 in Jeremiah chapter 28. Okay? In front of the priests and all the people. Then he gives this very big, ear-tickling prophecy, which of course was not true. There's a lot of that going on today right now, isn't there? A lot of people out there tickling your ears, telling you smooth things, right? Some even say that they're of the Lord, aren't they? Some of them are even saying that, right? Yeah. Let's continue in 2 Peter. Verse 14, 2 Peter 2. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. What, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 28, what was Hananiah coveting? The praises of men. How can ye believe, those of you who seek honor one from another, and don't seek the honor that cometh from God only? 
And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Remember? Verse 15 in 2 Peter. We're reading to verse 19. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Asor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, the dumb meaning can't speak, ass donkey okay the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet these are wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they, while they promise them liberty, these false prophets, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. Servant, not a slave. Chose. Making choice. You have choices. Oh, you all want to get right back to normal, don't you? This is the new normal. Go along with everything. Get back to normal. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 3. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. Verse 4. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. And isn't it interesting that nowadays, today, who are we facing? Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order. Isn't that an interesting thing, huh? Yeah. See, this is their time. The power of darkness. Okay. Or in the hour of darkness, excuse me. But you got these false prophets out there. Everything would do this and get back to normal. Within two full years, right? Everything will be back to normal to where you can go enjoy your life again. Well, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Think about the people who some of you, and I'm not talking out to the church of the living God, but think of those who you are putting your trust in. Are you aware that if you yourself were to take a little time and do your own research and look into where these people come from, where they were trained, where they were educated, you're going to find a Jesuit tie almost every single time. Especially with what's going on today. Those of the upper echelon on the top of the pyramid. Okay? The Jesuits. All Jesuit trained. Verse 3 in Jeremiah chapter 28 again. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house. We'll get back to normal here sooner or later, right? And then this will all be a, a memory. They started this. The Jesuits. They were allowed to do this for judgment on this wicked world. Our 
Are you, do you really think that this is just going to go away? That it's not going to resurface again? No, oh, no. Come on now. But there again, back in Jeremiah chapter 28, when you look at verse 1, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, he said this. Why? Well, it's very simple. We already touched on it, but uh, Jude 16? Jude 16? These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And now, and when you look at it, this Hananiah, hearing Jeremiah go back to Jeremiah, oh, I'm sure the people really loved him, don't you think? It's itching their ears, telling them what they want to hear. Go ahead, get stabbed. Go back to normal. Then two full years, right? I, I haven't heard any of these Jesuits say anything about them two full years, but it's very, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get stabbed. Go back to normal. Everything is going to be okay. This will just disappear. This ain't over. This ain't over, people. Are you ready? And I'm not talking about you having provisions in your home. I'm talking, are you ready? Are you ready for the worst? What happens if you die? Are you ready? Or are you a fool? Thinking that when you die, you're just going to go down to the ground and be worm food. Let's continue. Verse 5 in Jeremiah chapter 28. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. Jeremiah was, you know, answering him back. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And what does he say? Even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, amen. Bravo. Yeah. The Lord do so. <laughs> Nevertheless, but... <laughs> Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. Those who sin rebuke before all. Is Hananiah sinning? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hello? Yes. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and, uh, and of evil and of pestilence. Pestilence, huh? <laughs> yeah. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. You've been warned. You've been admonished. Some of you have been rebuked. 
it's kind of hard to find certain things online because of these things called algorithms or whatever they are. And if <laughs> you don't think that the Jesuits would purposely make it so if you were to search for certain things online that you wouldn't be able to find it, you don't think the Jesuits would have anything to do with that, do you? That's why where there are those out there who are truly, truly gifted at um, finding information. Um, when the Lord allows you to cross, cross paths with someone who is truly gifted at finding information like that, that's a treasure. That's a treasure. That is a true treasure. I hope every one of you may know of someone who is very, who does have a gift of finding certain things of information for you. I hope you do. It's a priceless treasure. And thank you. But, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. Get back to normal. Peace, right? And then here comes a, a peace. Is it a lasting peace or is it going to be a temporary peace? Let's see. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass. See? See? It came to pass just like we said. Kind of like in Egypt when the magicians threw down their rods and they became serpents. Aaron's rod gobbled them up. And also the pouring out of blood and stuff like that. They were able to mimic that as well. See? Verse 2. And the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Think about it. Get stabbed. See? Now you can go back to normal. Listen to us, because we know what's best for you. Oh, the God of the authorized version of the scripture? Ah no, 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 here, here, here. Let me get you let me get you a Bible instead. Yeah. Yeah. We know what's best for you. See, see how things are going back to normal? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Why? Or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, does the Lord not know whose his own are? <laughs> Of course he does. Even you devils have to admit that. Yes. The Lord knows who are his. Yes. Okay. So the proveth you. Who is this being proved unto? To know whether ye, plural, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Do you love the Lord... Your God with all your heart and with all your soul? Or is that God that you love with all your heart and all your soul the one that you're looking at in the mirror? Hmm? See, those of the church of the living God, I, I would hope, <laughs> I pray, that those of the church of the living God would have nothing but trust and faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ in the times present. No matter what happens. To avoid being stabbed. No matter the cost. It's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, go ahead, shoot me. Uh-uh, ain't doing it. Right? I would hope so. I would hope so. But see, for those of you who are lost,
Yeah. Go ahead. They bring a sign or a wonder to pass. See how everything disappeared? We're going back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, really has a big problem with false prophets. Because they turn away the heart of the people to follow devils. Look what's happening today, people. Your only true hope is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is the answer that you're seeking, that you're looking for. The people of this world, they don't got the answer. The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the answer to your question. But now go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Verses 20 on to verse 22. Okay? But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. See, False prophets, devils, can get away with a little bit. They can, they can bring certain things to pass, but they can only go so far. Okay? They can only go so far. You read about that in the book of Exodus with the magicians of Egypt. Okay? They can only go so far. There is only so far a false prophet can go. Okay? If a sign or a wonder something come to pass... The Lord proveth you. You're going to believe these false prophets or the Lord? And referring to those out there today, outside your door right now today, uh, it is quite fair to refer to them as prophets, isn't it? Isn't it? Do this and everything will go back to normal. <laughs> verse 4 in Jeremiah chapter 28 and I will bring again to this place Jeconiah the son of Jehoiakim king of Judah with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon saith the Lord for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon peace is coming peace is coming yeah 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 speaking of that 1st Thessalonians 1st huh? Thessalonians chapter 5 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 1 unto verse 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when... They shall say, peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Then sudden destruction, peace 
and safety. They're offering you what? Peace and safety to get back to normal. But there are consequences for that. And those consequences, <laughs> you can find. You can find those consequences to those who go along with the Jesuits and their version of peace and safety. Get back to normal. Do what we say because we know what's best for you. Turn your gaze from the scriptures to us. Look at us. Having men's person and admiration because of advantage. And it says, Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Whose breaking cometh sudden and an instant. I, I do hope you're ready. I really do. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. The breastplate, of course, covers your heart. Okay? And the hope and the helmet. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Helmet covers your head. Okay? Your hope of salvation, the blessed hope. The redemption of the purchased possession. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verses 8 and 9 clearly point on to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jesus' trouble. Okay? Clearly. He has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. Pray for one another, brethren. Comfort one another. Do what you can with what you have been given unto the church of the living God, your brothers and sisters. Because when they say peace, peace. When they say peace, uh, when they, who is this? For when they shall say peace and safety. Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Are you really ready? I hope so. I hope so. And of course, let's let's drive this home to Isaiah chapter 57, just two verses. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 20 on to verse 21. But the wicked, those of the world, are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest whose waters cast up mire and dirt. <laughs> there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 10. 10 and continuing. 
Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. Look at me! <laughs> Giving a shoe. Okay, shock and awe. Oh. Making, it, making himself look good by the look. See what I'm doing? <laughs> and Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of, of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. <laughs> so he was warned. Hananiah was warned of Jeremiah. But because he had men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And he wanted to, you know, make people like him. And please the people. It affected nothing. Fortunately, what did Jeremiah do? As all, only what you and I can do today, brethren. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Just That's the hard part. You know, the Lord uh, blesses you with information on things and in conversation you bring up these things and um, just deer in a headlight or fight right it's the condition that we live in right now today brethren we can't give up But whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Do as the Lord would guide you. And if the Lord will open doors, praise the Lord. But if doors are shut before your, your eyes, your face, and the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet. After that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord. See, Hananiah was one of these false prophets talked about in um, Deuteronomy chapter 18. And to break the yoke was uh, congruent with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13. It's like, here, here's a sign. I break these yokes. See, look at this. But the Lord, of course, had a very different uh, point of view on this. Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. Iron can't be easily broken, can it? And these people who have fallen for this lie. And have sealed their own death warrants. See, these people today, the ones who are in control, the Jesuits, Y'all going to pay a really heavy price for this one day. You will. Oh, you will. Because you guys have broke the yokes of wood and have put on them instead yokes of iron. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was the Lord's tool of judgment for that time. His judgment. There is no peace, people. The only peace 
The only shalom that you're going to have is if the Lord Jesus Christ save you. That's the only peace you're ever going to have is in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. <laughs> With all this stuff, how can you remain calm? <laughs> here, come here, let me, let me tell you about some of this. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Uh, you, that. You have religion, that's fine. Keep it to yourself. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Okay, buddy. Or, okay, lady. You've been warned. Verse 14 again. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, you charismatic, Pentecatholic devils, and you easy believism, evil devils. The Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. All of them. All of them of the world. The Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Of course, thank you. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8. On verse 13. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seer, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because he despised this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Whose breaking cometh suddenly and at an instant. First, uh, First Thessalonians chapter five verse three. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Second Timothy chapter four. Verses 1 under verse 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, no, oh, that's second. Uh, yeah. Yes, Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. How ready are we? How ready are we, Church of the Living God? I know there are some more prepared than others. And I'm not just talking about provision. You know that, right? I'm not just ta I'm not talking about stuff. You know, 
if you've ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs, that horror that you read in there, could it be possible that we today in these times could see such things? Uh, yeah. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For the time will come when they shall not, when they will not, excuse me, endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, the scriptures, and shall be turned on the fables, <laughs> Bibles, that those who are in charge today of this world have your best interests in their, in their minds. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be really, really, really blunt with you. Um, and I, I actually know for certain that <laughs> there are people out there who truly believe that those who are in control today of this world, uh, those who are controlling, pulling the strings, calling the shots out there for everybody in this world today, there are those out there who truly believe that these people, the elites, care about people. Um, have any of you ever heard of the Georgia Guidestones, by the way? Have you heard of that? That's here, obviously, in America. Um, do a Georgia Guidestones. Google it. Read what's on the Google, uh, on the, um, uh, Georgia Guidestones. I'll get it out. You think that has anything to do with what's going on today? So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, of course, I had to go here, verses 10 on to verse 12. Let's refresh our memory. In Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 15, Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Second Thessalonians chapter two verses ten on to verse twelve, and with all deceivableness, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth but had pleasure. And unrighteousness. You know, it does reach a point, brethren. It, it truly does. When um, you are casting your pearls before swine and giving that which is holy unto dogs, that does not absolve you from just sitting here waiting. No. Again, whatever capacity the Lord has put you in, do something. Okay? Yes. But, um, these are the times that we live in. And we need to be truly prepared for the things that we are eventually going to see here. Probably this year. I don't know. I don't know. But are we ready? I hope so. You know, the time right now that we have as the Church of the Living God 
ought to be spent encouraging one another, strengthening one another, helping one another, in whatever capacity that is. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Love one another. Right now, we as the Church of the Living God, that is what we need to focus on. And speaking the truth of the Scriptures, as our Lord would guide us, to whomever will hear, whether they have ears or whether they will not, uh, whether they hear, uh, whether they will hear or not hear. <laughs> Thank you, pardon for that. Okay. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. You know. Verse sixteen and seventeen in Jeremiah chapter twenty-eight. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold. I will cast thee from I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Those out there who make the people believe in a lie. The easy believism lie. That, <laughs> that the Catholic death creators have your best interest in mind. That getting stabbed is going to bring in peace. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 30 on to verse 32. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not nor commanded them. Therefore shall they not profit this people, people at all, saith the Lord. And Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 22. I read this this morning, and it was just so, ooh. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23 on to the close of the chapter. Ezekiel chapter 22, please. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. No. A conspiracy nowadays? No, 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 that's no, there's no such thing as that. Oh yeah, everybody is so truthful nowadays, right? There's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey, and your adversary the devil as a roaring lion seeketh whom he may devour. That's in 1 Peter chapter 5. I just bradized that. Beg your pardon. But. There's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many window widows in the midst thereof. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Oh, meaning maybe perhaps a lot of people died. Yeah. Her priests have violated my law. 
They have profaned my whole, mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. But no, what have they done today? It's not black and white. No, it's a shade of gray. Yea, hath God said. Look at that. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. What are we as the church of the living God today supposed to do? As ambassadors, as ministers of reconciliation, who have the word of reconciliation, what are we supposed to do? Preach our Lord Jesus Christ. The difference between what? Holy, separate, and profane. You know, profane, everybody uses, isn't it? Holy is something by itself, separate. Something that is profane has had many things touch it in a way, right? Think about that. Look what's going on today. Brethren, are we putting a difference between the holy and profane? Because they sure, they sure ain't, are they? No, but everything's a shade of gray. Neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and profane, and I am profane among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls and to get dishonest gain. Wow, isn't that kind of telling about what's going on today, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey. To shed blood and to destroy souls. <laughs> to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have dogged them with untempered mortar, seen vanity, and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. This goes a little bit deeper than just these twit devils talking about Trump and all these Catholic, Pentecatholic people. This goes a little bit deeper than that. But you know that, don't you? The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed at the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger Wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should, that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them and I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Oh boy. Today the church of the living God, the body of Christ is on the earth. But he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way once the church of the living God is out of here. Oh, wow. There are people standing in the gaps today. There are. But when you look at verse 30, put that into equation with future events. Hmm. You know, go to Isaiah. 
chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Uzziah, King Uzziah, he was a godly king. And when he, when the, in the year that King Uzziah died, the godly king, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. So when the good king died, or the godly king died, then he saw the Lord. Hmm. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, 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 spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not that satanic trinity. Don't get me started on that. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Hold your place here. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Verse 5 in Isaiah chapter 6, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. See, the fear of the Lord is going to show you what you truly are. <laughs> a sinner, no good. Not righteous, can't save yourself without hope. And then through the scriptures, you will learn that our Lord was harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. And that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. You get it? Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Are you undone yet? You still got a little of that pride left in you. Because I am a man of unclean lips. He's, you know, he was a sinner. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand. Which he had taken from the, with, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, "Lo, this hath touched thy thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged." Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, "Whom shall I send, and who will go for us?" Then said I, "Here am I. Send me." Here am I, send me. Godly are ceasing out of the land. Whom will I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Verse 9, And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their hearts, and understand, and hear with their ears, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, ah, then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, 
until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. How long? <laughs> and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Talking about future fulfillment there. But, you see, we are sent as ministers of reconciliation with the word of reconciliation to preach the gospel. You, have, have you forgot that's what we're supposed to do? Especially right now. Because Mystery Babylon and her army, Jesuit order, you know, Roman Catholicism, Jesuits, they're saying peace, peace. And there is no peace. And who of us is going to stand in the gap? Who of us, still to this day, here am I, send me. So many, so many have been warned, but people don't want to hear. There's still hope. There's still hope, yes. But it's getting few and far between right now. Remember, brethren, to always keep your eye upon Jesus. Keep your ears open. Because um, we're going to be seeing some pretty horrific times coming. But right now, see, everything is peaceful, right? Getting back to normal. You just wait. You just wait. Your answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you lost people out there? There are some of you devils out there who have made your choice and you are going to hell. There's nothing we can do for you. There's nothing that can be done. You know? <laughs> You've made your choice. You're an enemy of the Lord. You know? What can we do for you? I often think about, you know, what's it going to be like when these people, when some of these people realize that Everything that those of us who are of the Church of the Living God, who believe the authorized version of the Scriptures and have been warning people day in and day out, in whatever capacity that you're in, once the redemption of the purchase possession happens, there are going to be some out there, brethren, once we are redeemed, who are going to, wow, understand, going to get it. Jewry as a whole at that moment, right? Once we are uh, redeemed, no. But um, once the catching way happens, there are going to be, I, I believe, that there are going to be people all, right away are going to be like, oh, no. Especially these fakes. And by that time, uh, you know, because once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, this dispensation ends. Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. Faith and works. Then a lot of these guys who are fake, preaching easy believism, now that their enemy, the church of the living God, is out of the way, they're going to have the freest of reign to bring everybody onto mystery Babylon. Continue, brethren, 
stay strong in the Lord. Read the scriptures daily. And encourage one another. As you do. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. Love one another. Be there for one another in whatever capacity you can be there in. And um, that's going to be it for this video. An impromptu quick video. <laughs> Only an hour this is actually a quick video. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Come on.